welcome to all to session of SAP online classes. Today we will learn about worm gear, which comes under design of machine elements and module four, semester eight of mechanical engineering. The session will be handled by Dr. Jobin Vogis, Associate Professor, Adi Shankara Institute of Engineering and Technology, Karadi Ernagulam. We welcome you, sir. Now this is an instruction for the students. The entire session will be of one hour. So, Thank you. This is an instruction for the student. The entire session will be of one hour, out of which the entire, out of which the first twenty minutes will be the presentation, which will be followed by a ten minutes of Q and A session. That is question and answer session. Then again, the presentation will be for twenty minutes, and it will be followed by a ten minutes of question and answer session. For those who want to ask a question, should use the Q A option available among the options which you can see under your screen. I'll repeat: to ask a question, you have to use the Q A option available under the options which you can see in your screen for asking a question. Obviously, so we are beginning. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. So. Working on working last two sessions so basically on double gears as well as helical gears and come to the worm gear, which is the last part of the module four. And uh, like so, uh, this is the contents which I would like to just uh, convey today that are the worm gear theory, worm gear design procedure, and worm gear demonstration problems. And if possible, some softwares which can assist you in just calculating that one as well. So the first part is like, uh, as we have already covered some of the things like and the straight bubble gears, worm, it's, it's in between the, the, the session and the uh, helical gears. As we can compare, there is a normal ratio that is a ratio of reduction velocity, reduction ratios here. Okay, well, so uh, we're just uh, focusing on the efficiency since which gear is better to be used. So in fact, you can see it's for gears which comes up to 98%. Then it comes a straight bevel to ninety-seven percentage, and that comes to helical gear ninety-four to ninety-eight percentage. However, when it comes to the worm worm gears, it comes only to fifty to ninety percentage. Although its efficiency is much less here, it is uh, there is acceptable in body area of because of this its own usage, its own different uses. Okay, let's uh, come to the worm gears. Uh, the major factors that uh, can be designed on the basic parameters used for designing are is it is it one, is it two, Q and M. Where is it one is the number of stars on the worm, and is it two the number of teeth on the worm wheel, and diameter quotient. It's a quotient here and a module as we have seen, and we'll come in detail in later sessions. So it comes to the worm wheel, worm gear, we can see that uh, there's a pointer here. Okay, come to the worm gear. This is a type of worm gear where exactly there is a 90 degree the transmission of power and torque happens here. Also 90 degree, not necessary. And again, we'll see this just shows the figures of the worm gear. And we come to here and uh, uh, the major idea behind this one or usage of worm gear is that one not intersecting shaft like you can see the axes are not intersecting anywhere here. So we are using to transmit the power in the non intersecting axis. That is at right angles, but not, not necessary, preferably always with right angles. And the major uh, benefit of this one is you can transmit high torque without failures because many teeth are in contact at, at a time. Then when the high velocity ratio is, re reduction is required, when the high velocity reduction is required, we'll be using this uh, worm gears. Other disadvantages and uh, advantages when you see that, this the major advantage is that can reduce the velocity as high as three three hundred is to one, which is in a very perfect uh, designing and manufacturing when happens, and it's in a single state with a minimum space. This is the major advantage. It's like in a single state itself, it can be reduced. That that what I mean by velocity reduction is that if the the motor is uh, running at an RPM of three thousand, again that can be reduced to ten or fifteen within a single step. It doesn't require multiple like the uh, sport gears or helical gears where we are just combining many gears to reduce the velocity ratio. However, in the case, uh, what happens is that you can in a single step as well as the space, which is quite compact, this like the gear train, which we are using the uh, sport gears. But however, there's disadvantages like uh, has very low efficiency 
And the other one is like it cannot be inter interchangeable. That means we can use a different worm for this one if the diameter is increased. For example, the thread pitch, the distance the pitch. In fact, what do you mean by the distance between these gaps are same in a bigger diameter also. We cannot use this, this type of pinion. We call it a pinion here for the different things. So we cannot interchange between this one. The same pair has to be used. However, in the case of helical as well as bevel as well as spur gears, that's not a problem. Then it comes, uh, uh, that, that's another major uh, disadvantage here. It comes here like uh, the pinion and gear. We just consider this as the pinion, that's because there is uh, less number of teeth on this one, and we consider this as the gear because there is two parts for the uh, pinion, like uh, worm wheels, like worm as well as the gear or worm wheel, we call it as. And worm is considered as the pinion, or worm is this one, and worm wheel is in fact this one is the gear with number of teeth and you can see in many machines we can see the skewers and uh, mostly in industry will be seeing this type of gears the, uh, this shows a small animation of this one how it's work you can see that uh, the, the there is a inclination over here which actually pulls this gears upward when you rotate it, it the inclination of this gears you can see the teeth have an inclination over, over the pinion which push push the push or uh, just moves this gears, whatever worm gear. Next comes the uh, operational characters of worm gear set. So, so that, that's I already discussed. Like, uh, in fact, uh, it will not be working. Suppose we are changing this one to a different wheel. Like, this is a pinion. We are taking this one to a different wheel, having a bigger diameter. In this case, what happens is that one it won't work here because it won't mesh clearly. That's the reason why uh, we cannot interchange. That is the operational characters when it comes then comes uh, specifically to the worm there is some basic uh, uh, parameters to be understood and this is the shaft which will be connecting to the worm uh, pinion of a part of the worm so this is called the pitch diameter that is the pitch circle the, the distance between the pitch circle then it comes the worm pitch that is pitch is from starting from the point to ending in the same point which is called as the pitch and it's along the worm axis. The, the only condition is that it should be measured along the worm axis. Then comes the helix angle. So helix angle is like uh, when we draw uh, like helix and extend the helix to this one and making an, just an uh, angle with the uh, pitch circle, maybe axis. You can consider the axis. So it is a helix angle. Then comes the lead. This lead is like when we turn one time, how long it will move, or how much it will move. There, this will be moving in a, like a, we can assume like a nut and bolt. Or maybe a screw. So when we rotate one time, how much it linearly it moves? That that is represented by the lead. So don't confuse between the pitch and lead. In fact, that is this is the linear distance it will move. This is the measurement over the pitch. So uh, you can see there are different types of uh, uh, worm gears here. So we call it as a lead or single star thread. But I'll just show you in detail in the next slide. So there are different type of uh, slides here. So in this case uh, there is called a single start double start so single start means only one thread which will go around this one and the double start a, a single turn starts here another turn starts here two turns will be in a helix angle it will be winding over this one so major advantage is like you can see the gap be between these two this will hang this much gap this hang this much gap means there is a precise movement possible in the double start our precise movement is not possible in the single start also more load can be taken at a double start and when we just go into the in a reality where you can see that this is one thread starting this is the other thread starting which together are winding together so more, when more precision required more number of starts is required and in fact you can see this a uh, number of uh, having different start one thread two thread three thread four thread so four threads will be starting from and will be going so it's quite precise and the pitch angle will be really less in case and uh, when come to this point here, the lead angle and calculating the lead angle for a single start thread, you can see lead angle is the distance between two pitches. However, when you come to these cases, it is not that one between between two because two threads in between there is a one thread. So totally is equal to two times the pitch. And the case of it will be three times the pitch. There will be a difference in the lead. That is the moment which is going uh, three. We have to calculate three threads. You have to pass to get the lead. And some other parameters to be introduced is the angles here. So you can see, uh, first one, I just come to the lead angle. This is called the lead angle, which is represented by gamma here. So when we draw a tangent here, and when we take 
surface that is perpendicular to the axis of this one. So this is the perpendicular surface and this is the like a tangent to the helix angle. So this is the sort of helix surface to the tangent when we have an angle that is called a lead angle, the angle of the lead. So we can uh, see that one that is the vertical. When we take a vertical of this angle with a vertical, we, we get a lead angle. And in fact, this is the helix angle. So here, how we are not using this one, we are using helix angle as beta. Uh, so here, beta, when you see the axis with the this one, the helix, again, the helix, which the axis of in this one, you can see horizontal. Vertical, when it comes the lead angle, horizontal when it comes the helix angle. And there is another called the pressure angle. So pressure angle is the angle between the pitch. So there, there is two leads here, two threads here between that one, what is it? And half of that one will take us alpha, which is the pressure angle. We consider when we draw a vertical over here, we'll get half of this one. So alpha is the pressure angle. So these are the three angles which we'll be using in this one for the calculations. And worm gear, uh, different types of gears are here. So in fact, uh, first I come to straight face worm gear. In the straight face worm gear, it's like I, uh, usually we use the helical gear. Our spogius creates uh, more sounds when com compared to the helical gear. So in the case, what happens is that the, uh, the teeth will be in the straight axis. That is being also the axis of the worm straight. That is bevel, the gear, worm gear as well as worm will be in the straight, the axis will be straight. So what happens is the contact area is much lesser and a single point is actually transferring on each teeth, like what will be the contact, each single point will be transferring the force. However, in the case of second one is a hop straight face worm gear. In this case, you can see there is a curvature here. The curvature is found over the teeth, over the teeth, like on the teeth, you can see a curvature. So at this curvature, when meshes with the uh, like worm, what happens more contact area comes into being. That again, we will see in our section. So, and finally, uh, we can see that concave is uh, worm gear. So here, the, there's a, there, there will be a concave on the teeth. Also, the teeth is having a small concave, like a con structure. So totally the contact area will be more in this case and more force can be or torque can be transferred. And this is well explained here uh, one more time in a detailed explanation. So in fact, you can, so we, we just again uh, classify this one worm gear set into three like non-throttled, throttled, and throttled having single envelope and double envelope. So which I have already explained, this is another classification where we can see this is a non-throttled means there is no throttle over the teeth. So it's all, everything is free. Now it comes to the throttled in which single envelope, single envelope is like, uh, as I've seen that you can see there is a curvature here over the teeth. There's a small curvature on the top of the top land of the teeth. And third curvature when in the side view, you can see there is a small curve which is formed with this one. That is, in this case, that curve cannot be seen. However, in this case, more curve. That is, it is in more contact with the worm. And in the third case, that is double, in the case of double enveloping. The reason is that it's, it's called as double enveloping because this is also bended. The axis here, it's also bended. Also, it's also bended. In both cases, it's bended so that the contact area is much higher in this case when compared to this one, where more amount of force can be transferred. And in normally worm arrangement, worm is the driver and the wheel is the driven. Usually we take in such a manner. And worm wheel, uh, worm wheel, uh, already I explained about the worm wheels. Uh, so in fact, this is the worm wheel and it is having a head example. When we, this, this is the teeth, when we draw along the teeth like this way, and we take the angle that the helix of the edge. And there are two types like uh, right hand worm wheel and left hand worm wheel. As we are seen in the uh, helical gear again, against rotation, we are just keeping our fingers and uh, seeing that how this um, if the thumb is pointing. As per, we'll be taking if the right hand thumb is pointing towards this one, we take the right hand worm gear, and in this case, the left hand worm gear, which I just already discussed in the helical gears. Almost same. And this is the first part of this one, and uh, we are coming to the design part here. Okay. Uh, so, before we start to design, is there any specific questions? Uh, so, as of now, we don't have any questions. So, uh, we can continue. We'll ask questions later. Yeah, sure. Okay, so, okay. Uh, yeah. Session requires uh, much more time to explain, so then I'll just run through the theory in a faster way. So in the case of design of bone gears, the, there are steps like uh, almost uh, eight to nine steps we have to complete when compared to helical cell bevel gears. The first 
uh, section is like obviously we are just selling the material for any design. So in fact, uh, we have uh, uh, we have given uh, give the reference to point seven page tool thirty four. In that one we can take for this one. And uh, usually we use the material as foam is hardened steel and the foam wheel is phosphorus bronze. Bronze. This is the usual material we'll be choosing. Suppose the material is not given. Further, we can take it from this page type to twelve point seven page two thirty four. Two thirty four. We can see that the material there. Next one is uh, we will be finding the weaker part. Always we are designing the gear based on the weaker part. Here, uh, although we are not following the same procedure as we are just find uh, we are following the bevel gear as well as the helical gear. The, here we will be taking the worm wheel as the weaker one. The reason is that when the worm wheel always slide over the worm, the uh, the structure is such a, such a way that and the helical helical angle is such a way that. So as a result of rubbing, there will be heating happens, overheating happens, and which leads to failure. So when heat happens, there will be changes in the strength of the material as well as the failure may happen. So obviously the additional factor which has to come back with the, uh, is we have to calculate in the case of worm wheel is the heat, which dissipated and generated. The third comes, uh, so in the uh, third, our second steps comes to we have to find the diameter. So first uh, we are classifying the problems based on center distance is known and otherwise center distance is unknown. In the other cases, we were classifying with the case of diameters, which diameter is known, which diameter is unknown. In this case, center distance. Center distance means the distance between two gears, that is, worm as well as the worm wheel. The distance is known. So once the distance is given, the distance is given by the letter A. So we can calculate directly. If not given, we have to use this equation, that is power, which will be given, how much power we have to transmit. Then from this I dash is the transmission ratio that is N1 by N2. From this, we have to calculate what is A. Once the A is calculated again further, we have to go for other calculations. Then comes to the module, where the module equation is F equal to sigma D C V P Y M, where we can see in 12.53 page 223. And the parameters here we can see is sigma D, which mostly will be given. If not, we have to take them from the data book. Then we can see the C V, that is uh, velocity factor, then B phase width, and Y is the home factor, and M is the module. From this one, M can be calculated, what is M. So here, Y is changed to so the difference here, all these factors can be used. And in the problem, in a, in a problematic uh, discussion, I will show you the, how it can be done. And then comes to the finding the lead angle, where I have explained what is lead angle. So you can see that when, uh, when we take a plane that is normal to the axis of this womb, as well as when we take a tangent from the womb, there will be angle called, we, we use this angle gamma as the lead angle. We have to find out the lead angle, tan, tan gamma is called mz by D1. Then we have to ask, we have already done in other gear designs, we have to use the dynamic tooth load. We have to find out what is the force that is occurring during running. When the gears are, are rotating together, there will be additional force will be acting because of uh, different different factors coming into being. So even if a friction is there, obviously, forces are coming into uh, the scenario. And as a result, and the thrust forces, many forces are coming into this one. A dynamic tooth load comes here. So that should be calculated. Then second one is here to calculate the wear tooth load. The wear tooth load, in fact, what is mean by wear tooth load is the maximum load at which the wear can take place. So obviously, if the dynamic load is equal to wear load, that, that means uh, like uh, it's not in a safe condition. However, we can run it for some time. The major condition is the wear load should be greater than dynamic load. FS is represented by dynamic load. So as a result, if the wear load is greater than dynamic load, then even though some force is extra added to that without, uh, apart from descending because of the external behavior, it will not, the gear will not wear. So that is the major thing here. Then comes to find the efficiency and we have to calculate the efficiency based on this equation. So the reason, the measure is that worm drives the worm gear. Here worm gear drives the worm. So in two cases in the data book is given and two equations, we have to use that. Then all the parameters required from theta can be calculated from this one. And uh, we are, that's the rubbing velocity, then uh, error friction. So all these things can be calculated here. And then the final comes to the heat generator. In fact, the heat generator, is means like as there is a rubbing happen between the boom as well as the boom, as a result of rubbing. In fact, the heat is generated and this heat should be dissipated or else what happens, the metal is getting highly heated. And finally, the failure occurs because of this reason. So uh, this is the equation we can use in this one. And uh, Fn is equal to Ft by cos alpha, 
Mark or Alpha is from television. I haven't seen in the data book the Mahadevan. I hope it has to be understood and learned this uh, equation for just calculating heat generator. Then heat de dissipated is given by this equation. So dissipated effect is maybe by a natural conversion or maybe if the force conversion is uh, obviously that the heat would be dissipating. However, we, what we are doing is like we will be we will and heat generated. If, if heat dissipated is greater than heat generated, obviously artificial cooling is not necessary because heat is rejecting out is greater than generated. So it's in a cool condition. In the other case, the artificial cooling is necessary and the fan should also be provided. So this comes to the demonstrative problem. So we come to demonstrative problem. This is a problem design of um, gear drive. So it has to transmit two kilowatt of power at thousand RPM. The speed ratio is given as 20 and center distance is 200 millimeter. Assume number of teeth on the worm wheel is 40 and number of starts on the worm to be two. Assume hardened steel and phosphorus bonds of the material is already given, sigma D. That is, uh, this is the permissible static stress that is given. Then check the gear for the standpoint of strength and gear. If not stress factor, K is equal to 0 0.69 hectopascal. And if the amount of heat generated is 1.7 kilowatt, check whether artificial cooling is necessary or not for a temperature rise of 40 degrees. So there is a temperature rise is given. In fact, we have to check whether artificial cooling is needed or not. So that is the major thing. So I have just listed out all the parameters here. And uh, first, and uh, what design for strength and wear, that is the thing. And here, this factor is like temperature T2 minus, that is rising temperature is 40 degrees. So when running, 40 degrees is generating heat is uh, generating as is 40 degrees centigrade. That's just temperature. So uh, temperature and heat is quite different. And it comes to this first part, like we have to find the material selection. So as I've seen that page number 234, there is an, uh, has to be selected for this one. However, the, the, the case already the material is given. So we don't want to select or else we have to just take this one and we can find out the sigma D from the material if not given. We have the sigma D already given. And second part is to find the identify the weaker gear. Obviously, I told the, the worm gear is the weaker part because of the heat generation and rubbing happens over that one. Uh, parameters I'll carry over this to this one. Third step, is, uh, third step, second step is like finding diameters. We have to find the diameters of the both the gears. So, in fact, you can see uh, in the case of this one, four speed reducers with integral worms, the AGMA recommends a mean pitch worm diameter so the, this is the worm diameter which is taken as the d1 so uh, using the equations a, a is the center distance which is already given from this one i have taken a and we calculate d1 equal to 75 mm in the case uh, we have to calculate d2 where the center distance is given using the equation we know what is a what we know what is d and d2 can be calculated now the first parameter like uh, uh, diameters of the both worm and worm wheel has been calculated Next, we have to calculate the module. In fact, this is a like little bit lengthy. However, uh, we have to take care of this one while calculating. So we can see that one in the third step. The permissible two thread according to Lewis equation is the, because the module will be calculating based on the Lewis equation. That is a static case. So uh, because we have to mesh together. Initially, the meshing happens in the static case. Then only the dynamic force coming to being where Buckingham theorem will be uh, further following. So if there is an equation, from this we can see a module here. So sigma d is already given here. Sigma d already we have a 55 megapascal, and uh, then we have a CV. CV value should be find out, and uh, so CV can be find out from this equation. That is 6.1 by 6.1 plus v, where we should we should find out from here. So you can see v is equal to in this equation v is equal to because we are designing for the gear worm gear. We are using d2 n2. We are not going d1 n1 because driver is pinion and driven is worm v. So from this velocity is calculated and uh, substitute in this one. Uh, in this figure, we'll get CV. So we already find CV, sigma D, and unknown is B and Y. Then we have to further go for B and Y. And remember that uh, N2, N2 is required in calculating V, where N2 can be calculated by from the gear ratio. So this we have to use some of our common sense how to calculate all the things by relating this. May not be always same same questions, but we should know that i equal to n1 by n2 is equal to z2 by z1. So all these things should be, uh, uh, we should have our d1 by d2, d2 by d1 should be in our mind. Then, 
comes the second parties like us, uh, as I told, like uh, Sigma D already calculated, C, C B already calculated, we have to calculate B and Y. Well, we are coming to calculate the Y. So, um, <clears throat> uh, okay, here uh, we calculate the FT. FT is calculating with the equation FT equal to 2 MTE by D2, where MT is equal to MT into KL. There is a factor called KL. So, we have to calculate what is KL. We come to page number 248, there is a KL. But it's not specified anything how so we are taking this one as a steady load tapping plow it's a steady load we are choosing this one to make our calculation easier so we are taking the steady load kl is taking us uh, mt is calculated and mt is i can see mt is calculated and 2 mt by d2 we will get what is ft so once we get ft this parameter is also found out and next comes uh, we have to calculate the y where uh, to come so Whatever I have found out, always I'm updating here. So all the things which I already previously found, updating here. So we are calculated M2, CV, V2, everything is updated. Then we have to calculate what is uh, the factor called Y. So in fact, uh, we know capital Y equal to pi into NY. So before that, we have to calculate what is this form, Lewis form factor. For that one, first we have to take Z1 equal to, this is the number of threads. Two threads is having. So We'll go into this one and see single and double threads. In the page number 244, sing, single and double threads. We have to get the pressure angle, the pressure angle alpha. And when we say get the alpha, we have taken from this table 12.28, that is alpha is equal to 14.5. We get that. And we are choosing 14.5, and Lewis factor y is found from this. And this y is uh, like substituted here, pi into y, and we will be substituting y. So but like we can get y equal to pi into y, there is 0 0.1, we we'll get this one. So we have calculated the form factor. And finally, only thing is that base width. And obviously, uh, you can see some word here. Uh, we can see, uh, we can get it from a different However, The reason behind this, we don't know the pressure angle and exact. Is it one equal to two? We don't have. We don't have a measurement that is given the table. So as a result, only we have gone through this way. If given directly, obviously, we can go through that as well. Then finally, we are calculating B, where B can be calculated B equal to A power by 2, direct equation, and calculate. Now substitute and find the module. We'll calculate the module. So I have, uh, I'm updating the next, uh, that is what is module. This comes to uh, the module is 2.88 calculation, and it has to be standardized from the table 229, that's page number 229 table 2.2. We can see that module is 3, that is sphere standardized. And I have data that's module may be used in as other calculations. Then next one we have to calculate the lead angle. So lead angle having the equation we can use in the equation 221. And this one d1 equal to z1 m2 by tan gamma. So all these are we are selecting depend upon the given equation or the parameters given in the question. That's available. If not available, obviously we have to choose a different equations according to the data that are given. So here we are using that one, and from we have to calculate what is gamma. So gamma is equal to we can calculate the tan inverse and inverse is at one m2 by d1 so, and, and gamma is here 4.57 degree the next one is the fine dynamic tooth load and uh, dynamic tooth load is represented here as the fs equal to sigma d b y m and then all the parameters are already given here in the sigma d for this one is given and uh, it's for um, b b already we have calculated b and y Calculate M, everything is calculated. So when we can calculate the dynamic law. Now, now we have to calculate the wear law. So wear law is D2 B. K is factor which is already given in the question. So as a result, we don't want to go for that one. K is already given, or else we have to find out from the table 12.30 if not given. As is given, we are taking directly here. Then D2 is already given. We know what is B and uh, we know k so from this one we can calculate and finally uh, this is the conclusion here so when once we calculate 12.33 so we say fw that a wear load is greater than dynamic load now when we divide you can see 12.330 by 28513 almost 4.3 that is the factor of safety is for 4.3 even though some external force act on the gear and increase the dynamic load what happens it can increase up to 4.3 times what's the load acting right now so it's a very uh, very very safe condition so we can move with the further designing 
Next one, the efficiency. So efficiency, the equation is given our efficiency when the worm drive, worm drives the worm wheel. That is equal to eta equal to cos theta minus mu tan gamma by cos theta plus mu cot gamma. So from this one, we have to calculate what is tan theta, where theta should be known as an unknown here. Tan theta is equal to tan alpha cos phi from the page number 224. And we can calculate what is theta, substitute theta, and also gamma is already we know what is gamma. And uh, then uh, the major thing here is the what is the what is mu, which is not given word. Uh, we have to find out what is mu. So for calculating the mu or the friction coefficient, you can see we can use the equation. The reason is that one, the greater speed than 2.75, this equation should be used. So as we are see the velocity, when we see the velocity, you can see. Uh, it's like uh, we have calculated the velocity v equal to pi d n by 60. So in this case, okay, uh, before that, I'll just uh, have a parameter uh, y is selected. Okay, vr is equal to pi d n by 60. Uh, we have found out 3.94 seconds. Again, we are calculating the velocity here v pi d n by 1000, where the velocity of the dn is 3.93, which is greater than 2.75. As a result, we are using this equation. If it is less than, we have to go for this equation. So v equal to we are finding and uh, finding the factor now mu equal to 0 0.0375 now all the parameters i hope we are we are calculated for the efficiency now substituting and we are finding efficiency equal to 66.92 so remember that already i have just shown you that is uh, usually that comes uh, when we have efficiency from 50 to 90 so this comes in between 66.92 Next part is finding heat generator. So heat generator, usually we will be finding the equation in the page number 227, this one. However, heat generator is already given in our parameters. So we don't want to calculate this heat generator. And uh, so here uh, there is a Fn. Fn is factor is here. Fn is a normal force to the tooth uh, surface. So Fn is equal to Ft by cos gamma, cos alpha. This is uh, calculated from the derivation. And I, I haven't seen anywhere in the data book obviously we have to just uh, know about this one or we have to derive from uh, this equation there is a diagrammatical equation where we have to uh, calculate from this one force analysis so heat generator is already given and we can go for uh, a heat dissipator so heat dissipator we have to find out the equation for heat dissipator and uh, then that should be solved now see that one heat dissipator another equation for the heat heat to be is equal to q equal to 0 0.407 by this equation the reason why we are using this equation is there is a fact t2 minus t1 where in the question is it asked to find out for temperature change in temperature t2 minus t1 equal to 40 degrees so that we are using the equation temperature is not given this equation can be used where this is the approximate calculation without temperature now, there are factors called AG and AW. AG, you can see here, this same the page number, AG equal to pi by 4 d square area of the worm gear. And where AW is the area of the worm, that is LW into D1. Where we have to calculate what is LW, we can come to 243 page number, where uh, that is LW is the phase length is given as 14.4 plus 0 0.06 z1 into m. So, this we are taken for single and double threads. Our thread is a double thread. When it's a triple thread, we have to calculate this one. However, the equation is same for both. Now, calculating all the values here, that is, uh, uh, we are getting AG, AW, LW, and substituting, we get what is the heat dissipator equal to 1402.85. Now, the conclusion comes is that one heat dissipator is 1402.85 is less than heat generator that is 1700 kilowatts it's already given 1.7 kilowatts so sorry 1000 is a wrong is a 1700 watts so this in between as you say qd is less than qg as a result what happens is that the dissipated is less than generator so more generating all the time as a result we have to give some artificial cooling artificial cooling should be given for this one and this, this is the problem we're solving for this kind of things. And I have used the references. And thank you for this section. And uh, maybe some questions you can ask. And I have to show a software demo where you can just work out if you're interested. 
Oh, thank you, sir. Yeah. For you. Uh, so the first is, as the wear and tear is high for this worm gear, is the please explain. Yes, uh, obviously lubrication is uh, usually will be using the lubrication, but however, the, as the point of in the real design, we will be using this one. This is for the academic point of view, where the lubrication layer is not considered or sliding layer is not considered in this case. So what is is, is like uh, when the lubrication comes into the, the factors has to be taken, like the viscosity of the lubricant and the reduction in the friction coefficient. Everything has to be calculated or we can take the friction coefficient and reduce it to the lubricating things. So that happens in not in an academic point of view, which is uh, very tedious and you cannot complete within uh, that uh, hours of examination. The calculation cannot be complete. That's why reason I think uh, academics are not included in this. For calculating module, why do you take CV 6.1 uh, by 6.1 plus V? So that is a general equation that is a data book, which is uh, which I have not taken actually. Okay. So uh, that is, uh, I can show you if you want, like, uh, okay, I didn't even watch this. I hope you might have seen that one. I have taken the equation directly. Uh, it's not nothing. Uh, it's already proven. Okay, you can see here. This is taken already given in this one. Okay, so that means it is a proven equation, right? It's a proven equation by the data okay. is provided. Okay, so so another question is, worm and a worm gear, is there any difference? Yes, sir. You understood what he is taught about. So, so you see, uh, we say I'll come to the picture first. Okay, uh, as we see in the in the, normally in the sport gears, we say or in the helical gear, we say there is a driver as as a driven. So always this one is the driver. That is this is called the worm. The worm is the driver, and this is the driven. We will be connecting these two different shafts, output shafts. And this will be the motor. The electric motor will be connecting to this shaft. So this first, this will electric motor will be the rotation to this one. Again, that will be transferring to this one. So the major idea is to reduce the velocity ratio. The velocity is 8,000 RPM. Means if we require only uh, 100 or 50 RPM, then we can use this one. So that's the major reason behind. If uh, I hope that I have answered the question. Okay, sir. Hello. Uh, is there less is there any self-locking mechanism? Yes. Yes, yes. Obviously, I haven't uh, spoken about that one. There is a mechanism is like it can only go forward, it cannot go backward. That's where the reason the major application we are using that one in the brains. That is uh, in many elevators, all the things, it cannot return back. Only in one direction it can rotate. The other one is a self-locking mechanism. Obviously, there's a self-locking mechanism. That, that's a point I think I think I have missed. This. So the uh, that, that means the self-locking mechanism is for uh, to go. Yes, yes. Or or even you cannot rotate uh, gear as well. We cannot rotate the uh, worm wing. We can only rotate the worm worm only. We can rotate only the worm. We cannot rotate the worm wing. If needed, we are taking the design. Okay, so sir, another question is: Is there any mathematical relation between and helix angle so as of now uh, I have improved but we have to uh, we have to take it from uh, the theory like uh, the slide here yeah. okay you can see this is the, the helix angle this is related like this way. if you just add together what will be the relation that is gamma plus uh, psi or uh, usually beta is used in a uh, data book so gamma plus beta is equal to 90 degree so we can use that relation if needed okay sir okay uh, audio audio is i cannot see i cannot hear i cannot hear oh, so there are two equations for calculating efficiency of worm here 
will it be simplified in the question which is the driver or the driven part so like uh, since i told like uh, we are designing this one as uh, that you are taking the worm wheel as the weaker part means worm wheel will be always a driven one and worm is a driving one so that is the usually we case for the academics in fact we are not going for the other case so that that for some reversing actions or to break more break when required we'll be using that type of designs so in fact you can go with this one only that worm is the driver and the other worm wheel is the driver so obviously there will be confusion in uh, taking the same part okay sir sir another one is so what are the areas of applications uh, when where worm gears are used and is there any areas even though the efficiency is very low okay. so uh, the first one you understand that uh, the major thing is like uh, the worm gears are majorly used for velocity reduction so that the way i told you like you know when we take an electric motor it can run uh, all over 2000 rpm for example i can take an a machinery case for example um, some case of a machinery where uh, rollers are running to have a in industrial steel industries we can see the rollers two rollers are running the steel is in between that one so that it can flatten more so the the measure is that the velocity should be well controlled or else there will not will not be flattening of the steel happens also the rollers will get damaged however in the case of an electric motor it will run at three to two thousand rpm or like that way as a result what happened uh, if 2000 RPM the rollers are running, what happens? The rollers will get damaged, steel will get damaged, the product will not get. So, when we are applying a worm gear, the major advantage is that one, it reduces in a single step, a single turn itself. What happens is that 3000 RPM will reduce to 50 RPM. And that depends upon the ratio, how we are just calculating, how we are designing it. Then, second one is that the compass space is much less required. The machine will not be bulky, as like uh, in the for gears, we had to use the gear trains. That is many gears combination to reduce this. Uh, also, major other application we can see that one in the elevators because uh, it will not rotate back. It, it, like uh, uh, they, they have a breaking mechanism. So all these things we can be used as. Okay, sir. What type of worm gears are used in systems in gear car? Can you can you repeat the question? I didn't hear it clearly. Uh, oh. So what type of worm gears are used? Okay. Uh, so what is the need of uh, using a worm gear in indexing cutting? That's uh, like uh, uh, if if the efficiency when we when we compare with the efficiency and high load to be transferred, we'll be using the worm gears usually. And indexing cutting, uh, in fact, um, I don't know exactly what gears are using in that one. But usually, I haven't seen the worm gears. And when there is a speed protection required and efficiency high, we can use such things. I hope okay. that is the reason that you have to uh, find with the companies where, what type of they are using. Okay, so I think the question is clear. Sir, again, one more question. Sir, is there any derivation for the normal force equation function? A normal force equation function means uh, I can make more clear on that one. Clear. Yeah. One more question is this. So, what about the metallurgy of worm gear and what are the common materials which are used to make worm gear? No, this uh, as per the academics, as like uh, as we can see that uh, you see the bronze. You see, you can use a bronze and a gear bronze steel can be, or steel can be used for this one. So this depend upon the. You can see all the uh, materials here. Usually, what is your requirement? What how much force we have to transfer? So we will be selecting sigma d based on the material. That is, we are always. I, I don't. We will be just comparing the static with the force which are recalculated. If the static stress, if the calculator is static greater than static stress, obviously that will fail. So, what is your application and what is the power to be transmitted depend upon the material has to be selected based on the sigma d values. 
okay that doesn't mean we cannot it's not restricted however there is restriction the manufacturing methods if like uh, it requires like when we have to make the worm wheel specific manufacturing methods are required so in that cases uh, we have to limit the materials easy man as per from our easy manufacturing okay so the last question was for the normal force equation function So I hope I are uh, is asking like something about this force that is this normal force derivation function like a normal force is there and uh, our, the derivation for this function or something or else I uh, can contact like other uh, mail ID okay, have given okay sir we'll collect the question and okay sir we'll collect the question and mail it to you we can answer later uh, so we'll go to the last question sir what are the applications of double triple threaded and four threaded worms yeah that's i told the major reason or the major idea behind creating such worms is that one like um, the when we when we need require a precise movement like the pitch movement is very precise as well as when we have to just transfer high amount of power more number of threads are coming into contact with this one in that cases we'll be using so generally that is costlier when you use so when we make a gear we have to take care of the cost with other applications that is uh, whether that worth in the business if so we can go for that so in that such applications are like precise and specific uh, applications will be only going for things in normal case as i have seen the robotics and everything they are using a single one since that much manual precision required we go for that okay sir okay uh, so the, with that we are coming to the end of the session so yeah just a uh, second like uh, I, I have to show i have to show one more thing here so uh, i hope the screen is visible this is autodesk inventor so if you are passionate enough like uh, we can uh, we can see these things without just deciding in these cases like uh, we can go to assembly that is uh, like uh, we can go to file new assembly the autodesk uh, inventor once we come to the assembly to uh, design design in this part and many components over here and apart from i'm just showing you worm gear so we can take the worm gear so like uh, so i have taken the worm gear this when we take the worm gear you can see design part here so design part having many components as i said the center distance you can change the center distance or can choose the center distance and uh, there is a calculation part here i'm not showing any how it should be a different session to do that so all the things you can work out on this one if you require and uh, remember that one except what are the calculation what we are doing uh, done already may not be obtained from here because this is considering a practical practical way of doing these things we are calculating at random clearance root fields and uh, as you said lubrications if required all the things are calculating materials and uh, poisons ratio worm material coefficient all things are calculating and finally we are designing this gear except gear so if you are interested like uh, we can go to autodesk scale which is an actually educational package which helps them which are always assisting education and can design also uh moreover there is like uh, another called the ansys package here so in fact uh, this can also be used to analyze this one and uh, uh, you can yeah uh, you can use uh, static structural to learn very easily this can be learned so static structural what can be used for easy learning and if you require for some movements and everything then obviously we can go to the explicit dynamics 
session. You can see LS Dyna or explicit dynamics is there. So you can take this one and learn like this way, better to have more idea on the design part. Uh, this can assist you. So with that, uh, I just completed my classes. Okay, sir. Um, it is really happy that you use all efforts to clear and it clear all doubts. And that was a wonderful session, sir. And it was well explained too. And we hope that the session was helpful to each one of our attendees. And uh, if anyone of you want to view this session again, you can visit our YouTube channel. ASAP official channel is there in your YouTube. You can visit that. So thank you, sir. And to all who took in this session, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, thank you.